welcome back to our channel. I'm Jennifer and this is Kate and Lent 2021 is coming right up starting February 17th. So today we're talking teenagers and Lent and how to make the season more meaningful for your older kids. I can't believe Lent is already coming up again. Like, wasn't it just Christmas? I know, it always feels that way. But that's all right, because we have several ways to help you today with Lent and your teenagers. We're going to start with a few fun trivia-based questions to see how much your older kids know about Lent or how much they remember from last year. And then we'll look at some meaningful ways that your teens can pray fast and give alms during Lent. And we also have some fun and interesting activities to help them grow spiritually. So let's start off by talking about what Lent is and what it isn't. Because I find that my students, even the older ones, can be a little bit fuzzy sometimes about what Lent really means. Lent is the season of 40 days that lead up to Easter. So the first trivia question to ask your teenagers is, why is Lent 40 days? Well, this goes back to Jesus' baptism in the Jordan by John the Baptist. Right after this happened, he went out into the wilderness for 40 days to pray and fast before starting his public ministry so he could grow closer to God and to understand his Father's will. And so we are doing the same thing as Jesus during the time of Lent. We are praying and fasting and trying to get closer to God. Lent is a time to look at yourself and see, you know, how do you spend your time? What do you say and what do you do? And it's also not an annoying time that you have to spend grumpy because your parents are making you give up something. Which leads us right into the second question, and that is, what does the church require us to give up for Lent? Okay, so the answer to this question is a little bit tricky because it's twofold. Number one, if you are old enough, the church does require you to fast and abstain on certain days during Lent. But other than that, there is no obligation at all that the church puts on us to give up anything for Lent, which can be a surprise for most people. Most people don't realize that. However, since we're using Lent to try to refocus our lives on God and get rid of the things that are distracting us, giving up something is usually a really helpful thing to do. So the next question has to do with Ash Wednesday. So you know that Ash Wednesday is the first day of Lent, the start of Lent, but you can ask your teens, do you have to go to Mass on Ash Wednesday? Is it a holy day of obligation? Drum roll, because the answer is surprisingly no. You do not have to attend Mass or a service on Ash Wednesday. But Lent is such a holy and beautiful time, and going to Mass on Ash Wednesday is a really great way to start your Lenten season. I'm always surprised in my classes how many of the kids, especially the older ones, have never received ashes on Ash Wednesday, or it's been years and they can barely remember ever doing it. So if you take your teenagers to a Mass and receive ashes this year, especially if it's been a while, I guarantee that will make a big impression on them. Now, I know it's a little bit hard this year because of COVID and some people can't get to Mass or the churches aren't open. So you can still watch a service online and the same goes for all the services during Holy Week. So the last question to ask your teenagers is what are the three pillars of Lent that help us grow spiritually? So if it's been a while, you might get some blank stares, but they'll probably eventually remember that it's praying, fasting, and almsgiving. So let's take a look at those. So let's start with prayer. If you just tell your teenagers, hey, you need to pray more during Lent, that can seem a little open-ended and a little daunting. So Lent is a good time to introduce praying using aspirations. Now, what is an aspiration? Well, an aspiration is a very short and powerful prayer that you can repeat often throughout the day. So an example of this is Jesus, Mary, and Joseph save souls, or Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. And the saints used these a lot, like St. Therese of Lisieux, the little flower. Another option for prayer is to pick one prayer, maybe to say with your older kids every day, or say as a family, such as the St. Michael, the Archangel prayer, or maybe the Memorare, or the Anima Christi. At our church, we often say these prayers at the end of Mass, but what I've noticed is a lot of the teenagers don't know these prayers, and so they just are uncomfortable and they just stand around awkwardly <laughs> waiting for Mass to be done so they can go home. 
So if you pick one of those prayers, say the Memorari, and pray it together every day during Lent, then it becomes very familiar and even comforting for them. I will have some of those prayers linked in the description box so you could print those out and maybe even put them up somewhere as a reminder. Now let's talk about fasting because fasting or giving something up is generally what we always think about first when we think about Lent. What should I give up or what should my teenagers give up? So I find it's very hard to give something up for the entirety of Lent unless it's meaningful to me. So it can be good to ask yourself a couple of questions to help narrow down what you might want to give up. So maybe you can ask yourself, what do I spend too much time on? Maybe you spend a lot of time watching Netflix or scrolling on your phone. Or maybe a good question would be, what religious practice do I wish I was better at? Maybe it's really hard for you to get out of bed for church on Sunday morning and you always hit the snooze button and someone has to come wake you up multiple times and it makes everyone in the house grumpy. Or maybe you want to better a relationship with somebody or get to know them better. So these questions are really helpful for you to figure out what do I need to do differently during Lent or what do I need to let go of in order to move closer to God. So if you want a better relationship with someone, maybe you need to start by not gossiping about that person or when you are talking to that person, don't roll your eyes. Or maybe you could give up checking your phone every 20 minutes and spend that time helping somebody or talking with someone. And if getting out of bed is hard for you on Sunday mornings, resolve during Lent that I'm just going to do this without complaining. I'm going to get out of bed and be cheerful. And that is going to make everyone in the house a lot happier, especially your parents. So now let's talk about almsgiving. So normally when we think of almsgiving, we think of donating money to a worthy cause or giving food to the food bank. And those are great things. But you can also encourage your teenagers to give up time during Lent because that definitely counts as almsgiving. For example, you can encourage them to give away prayer time, write a list of people that you know who need prayers, and have your teenagers pick someone from the list every day during Lent to pray for. Or you could have them send an encouraging text message to a friend or relative every day during Lent. That's 40 messages. So volunteering is also a great form of almsgiving to do during Lent. Now I know we're challenged this year because of COVID and we can't all go out and volunteer like we used to, but you can remind your teenagers that volunteering at home is a real thing. Maybe your teens can volunteer to cook dinner once a week for the family, or maybe the teens can volunteer to babysit without grumbling the younger kids or help a sibling with homework. That volunteering counts and is also a huge blessing for your family. So now we have a couple of fun and interesting activities that your teenagers can do during Lent. So the first one is the Insta-Lent Photo Challenge by Busted Halo. Every single day they're going to post a Lent-related photo prompt and then you can take a picture relating to that prompt and post it yourself. So we've done their Advent photo challenge before, and it's a really great way to focus in on the season because you're trying to come up with a picture that represents each word that they give you. So we're really looking forward to doing that this year, and we'll be posting some of our photos over on Instagram. Busted Halo also has a fast pray give calendar that gives you a spiritual activity to do for every single day of Lent. So if you're having some trouble deciding what you want to do during Lent, this makes it really easy and you can just do whatever the calendar suggests for that day. And if you have not yet discovered Father Mike Schmidt's Bible in a Year podcast from Ascension, that is a really great activity to do during Lent. It's free. You can jump in and join any time. It started in January, but believe me, you can really honestly just jump in and start on February 17th. So he does the Bible reading for that day, and then he talks about it, and he gives a reflection at the end, and it only takes about 20 minutes, but it's a very powerful 20 minutes. 
Another great podcast that your teens would enjoy during Lent is called The Lanky Guys, The Word on the Hill. It's from the Aquinas Institute in Colorado, and it's a priest, Father Peter Messet, and then Dr. Scott Powell, and they preview the readings for the coming Sunday. So every Thursday, they put up their podcast, and they talk about what you'll hear on Sunday, except they're so much fun. They are goofy and crazy and so knowledgeable. You will learn so much from their podcast. It is definitely not like an average catechism mm -hmm. podcast. And they work with a lot of college students, so they definitely have a good knowledge of the teenage and the young adult mind. You can also encourage your teenager to read a good book during Lent. So we just made a video about our top picks for Catholic teenagers to read during Lent, so we will definitely link that down below for you. And then what would Lent be without some pretzels? They're probably the ultimate Lenten food. So it could definitely be fun for your teenagers to make some pretzels during Lent. We did this so much last year and it was so good. We'll have our favorite recipe linked down below. Yeah, we made a ton of pretzels <laughs> during lockdown last spring and they were so good. And I've, you know, I've kind of missed them. So I'm really kind of excited that pretzels are coming back for Lent. So yeah, that's something to look forward to during Lent. So we hope you found this video helpful, got some ideas for how to make Lent meaningful for your teens. And let us know down in the comments what traditions for Lent that you have with your older kids. So we hope you all have a very blessed and holy Lent. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.